Cool. Okay. Um, yeah, my name is Jake Knight. I work for um, the Health Systems Collaborative based in Oxford, but my work is in Kenya, Tanzania, and uh, Vietnam. Um, so yeah, my email's up there. If any of this is of interest and you want to follow up, then please get in touch. Um, let me just move through this. Um, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about um, a project that I work on um, called Cinema. Um, but I want to first give you a little bit of background to that. Um, I think we've covered the, the fact that AMR threatens everyone. It's a kind of species level problem. Um, and that there's a strong desire to create global models of AMR that are informed by data across the whole globe. But um, unfortunately, it's, it's a fact that um, there's very little data from African settings. And what data is available is mostly collected at private facilities and suggests there's significant resistance, but there are concerns that this isn't necessarily very representative of, of, uh, of all the different geographies. Um, and so there's a, in summary, then there's a strong desire to collect more data on the true situation in African settings. Um, there's a desire to create systems that would be able to collect the data on an ongoing basis. And then finally, there's um, also, uh, you know, a, a, a concern, uh, a desire for better treatments to be given to, to African patients who are suffering with resistant infections. So the cinema then uh, is a project based in Kenya that is attempting to, to link um, government hospitals, Ministry of Health hospitals, with um, very well-equipped laboratories. It's, a, it's an unfortunate fact that um, the, the laboratories in the public health system in Kenya are not very good and don't offer um, microbiology. Many, many places haven't done um, uh, blood cultures for, 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 for many, for, for more than a couple of years. And in many cases, it's really irregular when they will be able to do one. And so the idea here is to link these hospitals with um, very skilled uh, hub laboratories and then ferry the, the samples from these hospitals to these hubs. The hubs would analyze the, the, um, the, the blood uh, samples and provide some data back to the hospitals, um, ideally to the clinicians who, who have given the samples for them to, for that to inform their choices and about what um, drugs to prescribe. And then equally that the, the data from this travels upwards to uh, a national team in Kenya who are working with international partners to share the data collected up into this kind of global models of AMR. Um, which would be a very good thing to do and, and in and of itself a, um, a, a very useful and timely um, contribution. Um, but this is also then, we, we kind of to paint the whole picture, it's important to recognize who else is around this. Um, you've got high income country governments that would very much like to know what the global burden looks like and, and what types of threat are emerging in different countries. Um, there's new global agencies and old global agencies that, that now have it in their mandate to look at these things. And then, of course, there's pharma companies um, for whom uh, these things represent uh, a, a market opportunity, um, but also research opportunities that will eventually end up in, in, um, in, in new drugs and new things to sell. So, so yeah, that's the, that's the kind of picture as we see it. And um, the work that we're doing with our, our little team um, that our little qualitative research team is, is mostly in these orange areas. It's around the hospitals and um, the relationships that they have with the hubs. So how easily they can pass on these samples, how the doctors uh, interpret the results that they get back and the impact of this um, overall on, on, on hospitals. And so in considering this, that we, um, that we look at these arrows and, and most of this is flowing up the way. Um, and there's some, some kind of missing bits here. And of course, that's patients and, and communities. And so um, in thinking about the meaning of this type of research and taking a step back from it and not just doing the work that's necessary as part of a multidisciplinary team to check this one idea about hubs and um, spoke systems for collecting data and for, for, for analyzing samples, we could just do that one thing, but I don't. Th I think we have a responsibility to to step back and and think about um, the the um, the system more broadly. And that involves um, the some previous work um, that we would draw on, 
uh, about what actually um, drives prescriptions in, in these types of hospital. Um, and so some of these things are within scope of this new project. Um, so about norms that, that, uh, that the doctors follow, um, what, their, what their lead clinicians suggest should be the antibiotics they use, um, their own experience in, in, uh, in understanding particular symptoms and the role of diagnostics in influencing those mental models that they have um, of what it is they should be doing. So that's all kind of in scope. But there's a set of other questions that, that surround this, which are really, really crucial and have been picked up by Ben and others on, on, on this call. Um, and those are what, what antibiotics are available in the facility. Um, you know, if the, if the antibiotics aren't there, then, you know, to give a prescription for them seems, seems problematic, to say the least. Um, another one which is perhaps less discussed is, is, will I see the patient again? There's real problems in continuity and doctors are concerned, uh, clinicians are concerned that they um, won't see a patient again. They want to give them something that will, will, will have the effect that they want. They don't want to experiment and watch progress over time. And they'd be very nervous about doing that because they might lose the patient. And so instead, there's a strong desire to give them, you know, something that will definitely help. Um, and that results in them going up, up the kind of uh, chain of, of, um, of, of antibiotics. And then finally, um, and obviously crucially, what can the patient afford? Um, and we were quite surprised to learn in this previous research that, that, uh, that doctors make judgments based on this without even really discussing it with patients so in some cases. They kind of look at, at the clothes they're wearing, um, you know, they're, they're, and make a kind of class-based assessment of the patient's ability to pay and then limit the, the mentally limit themselves about the types of um, antibiotic they might prescribe. So this is all relevant because um, each of these things is rooted in, in its own set of, of uh, contextual problems which, which structure or, or recreate these issues uh, in, in the hospital. And so um, for diagnostics, we're in this project, we're dealing with the issues around that. The, 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 the hub and spoke system that we're trialing um, it tries to solve this issue of laboratory effectiveness, which is a known issue. And, and then that will result in better diagnostics, which, which is a helpful and useful thing to do. But each of these other issues that I mentioned is also linked in its own background contextual factors, which, which create these problems. So um, norms come from professional networks, from leadership, from guidelines. Um, what the symptoms are telling me, how they're, they're understood comes from training um, and also from guidelines and from personal experience. Um, but then all these other ones about what, what antibiotics are available is linked in supply chains. Will I see the patient again in, in continuity of care? And what the patient can afford is linked into very complex questions around um, economics and insurance and pricing. So uh, not a simple system for sure. Um, and so reflecting on all this, I think that um, interdisciplinarity is essential to understanding the hub and spoke system that we're, we're analyzing in, in, this, uh, in this project, um, because it allows us to understand how clinicians interpret and use diagnostics. So in that area that we're focusing in, we can shed a lot, we can throw a lot of light on those processes and understand what clinicians are, are, are thinking and feeling. Um, but we also want to um, contextualize the outcome of microbiology informed diagnostics diagnosis. So um, what happens to patients? Can they, can they afford um, what the drugs that they're asked to find? Um, are the drugs available? Um, you know, to not look at that would be, would be errant of us, I believe. Um, and then also, um, can we, you know, do justice to these other issues that they experience and think about the meaning of this hub and spoke system in that larger context? Um, and in so doing, I think there's probably a need to challenge the prevailing narratives um, that, that don't really consider all of this. So the idea that, that, um, that doctors have this huge amount of agency over this and the, the reason they prescribe is just because, you know, they're, they're lazy or, or stupid or ignorant um, and all they need is better diagnostics to inform that, to, to, to let them make better choices. That's, that's problematic. Um, and we need to raise up all these other issues to show the complexity of it. But while I say that, um, I don't want to be too cynical 
um, about these things. I don't want to, to be nihilistic and say that nothing will work. Uh, why do we even bother? Look at all this complexity. We've got complex adaptive systems within complex adaptive systems. You have to start somewhere. And so this hub and spoke system does deal with one of these core issues and you know is really important for us to work on. So I'm happy to work on it. But I'm also aware that um, you know we need to, to frame it relative to all the other issues that are at play here.